The roundworm of dogs, with the musically sounding name of Doxocara canis, <coughs> is a most significant intestinal parasite of our pets, and now and then it enjoys humans too. If by chance on a long winter evening you find yourself slicing up roundworms to kill time, you'll understand how they earn their name. The parasite has a direct life cycle, which means its whole development might as well happen within a single host. Its life cycle is as simple as a nuclear submarine, therefore it's not enough to deworm once in a hurry, then light a Cuban cigar and pat yourself on the back. When you take your dog to the vet and the doctor wants to deworm it and you go, what the f hell man, we did that two weeks ago and you're sure you're being ripped off because of your golden wristwatch and Indian silk suit, well, it's all because of this worm. The traditional infectious form of the roundworm is the embryonated egg, practically a larva in a shell. It's much like a vacuum sealed toddler. When swallowed by a dog, it can behave in two different ways. In puppies, rather than staying put where intended by destiny, after all it's a gut worm, isn't it? The stupid thing chews itself through the bowel wall messes around in the liver trying to find a way, but holds the map upside down, its GPS isn't updated, and it's pitch dark inside anyway. Totally clueless, it lands in the lungs from where with a shrug, YOLO, it jumps head on into the airways. With great effort, it sweats itself up into the throat, grabs onto a charming piece of snot and gets Ooh. swallowed. Having found its god-given place in the small intestines, the worm realizes how time has gone by and, caving in under social pressure, it marries its high school sweetheart and together they start producing eggs by the thousand. Lots and lots of thousands. The worm typically, but not always, mind you, gets along in a different way in adult dogs. Namely, it will miss a crossroads in the lungs, ending up in the outback of mostly brain and muscle tissues. Here it will settle down, do its own laundry and uh, watch soccer games whenever not sleeping. It can carry on this miserable existence for years. Well, who wouldn't? In male dogs, this is where the worm's career ends, but in females it's different. As it's widely known, ladies have joys in life which gentlemen do not. They never get yelled at for leaving the toilet seat up, not taking out the trash or not shaving. And they can even become pregnant. In a pregnant bitch, the larvae can get moving again and enter the fetuses where, on the first breath of the pup, they break into the airways like crazy as if HD TVs were sold 80% off inside. A cough, a gulp, and there they are in the bowels, ready for adult life. Larvae that miss the train into the fetus can go boating on the milk of the bitch to reach the pups. But it's not just dogs that can contract the infection. Numerous warm-blooded species, mostly small rodents and birds, can be so-called paratenic hosts of the parasite. Like in adult dogs, larvae in these are total screw-ups as well. They never settle in the bowels and never become sexually mature. Their aimless wandering is only cut short if a dog devours the paratenic host, thus setting the parasite free. Out of gratitude, the worm finishes its development and starts laying eggs. Roundworm infection causes symptoms of varying gravity depending on the age of the animal and the number of worms present. Adult dogs are fairly resilient and the few worms in their bowels are too lonesome and depressed to cause any symptoms. No one appreciates me. I feel like a worm in the bowels of some stupid animal. There, there. That will be $70, please. Also, larvae rambling in tissues very rarely cause problems. It is the pups mostly that really suffer from roundworms. Their intestines may become as crowded as a Friday night disco and the headbanging doped worms get the host down. The appetite of the pups becomes erratic, their tummy gets bloated and painful, often their poop is mucus. They get thin, their immune system weakens, and at times they may even look paralyzed or have seizures. In other words, they show all the symptoms of internet deprivation. 
The migrating masses of young larvae can cause serious pneumonia at birth and hundreds of fully developed worms can lead to death. To diagnose roundworm infection, we need a microscope, some dog poop and a clothespin would also come in handy. With this method we look for eggs, which are produced by sexually mature worms only. But how can we detect larvae sleeping or wandering in tissues? Pfft, no clue. Still, their presence can almost be taken for granted. Unless the dog spends its days in a hazmat suit, it is most likely to get the infection sooner or later, and one occasion is enough to get its body well stocked with sleeping larvae, which have a much longer life than adult worms do. While sleeping, they are not much of a bother, but they can and will infect every puppy in every litter the bitch will ever have. A puppy having roundworms is well worth betting on with large sums. Clearly, dogs have lots of opportunities to raise roundworms and to litter the environment with millions of resistant eggs. Fortunately, we can do something about it, which is in the interest of all of us, even of those who hate dogs and every night dream about aliens replacing all dogs in the world with banana ham muffins. You see, roundworms can also settle in humans as peritonic hosts. Larvae hatching from the eggs wander about in the tissues of the body. The disease is called VLM for short, which stands for visceral larva migrants, the elegant version of something's freaking crawling inside you. Often there are no symptoms at all, or only very mild ones, but depending on the route the larvae take, serious <laughs> symptoms may also arise. It's mostly seen in children, but adults are not safe either. A definite diagnosis is almost impossible, which causes doctors to roll around sleeplessly at nights, making them seriously annoying the next day. Some of the medications against roundworms only kill off adult parasites in the bowels, but are powerless against larvae and have no long-lasting continuous effect. Other preparations last longer than just a few days and migrating larvae don't laugh at them that much. Puppies would be in the greatest need of the latter, since larvae from the womb and sipped from the milk continuously graduate and start working, but such agents are not to be administered up to a certain age. When deworming pups, we are left with the short-term stuff, aiming at a balance between efficiency and practicality, which greatly reduces the infection in dogs, but at the same time, no continuous administration of drugs with a high-powered Russian suction pump is necessary. Keeping to a well-constructed deworming schedule is of key importance. Puppies receive a frequent treatment, which gets less frequent as the dogs and their resistance against roundworms grow. So, by deworming the dog every other week, the vet is not trying to rip you off, even if he has an evil look, golden teeth and a thick gangster-like unibrow. Adult dogs are worth deworming at least once every three months, better of course every month, particularly if they live in highly roundworm infested areas. This can be fulfilled also by regularly applying heartworm preventives. There are products able to fight migrating larvae in pregnant and nursing bitches to prevent the infection of pups, but none of them are officially labeled for this purpose. In an ideal world where hot chicks hang out with the good guys, there are always free seats on buses, and no farts are ripped at dinner. <coughs> Bad dog. Fecal exams are performed every six or three months, or dare I say it, every month to find out if it's necessary to deworm the dog in question more or less frequently. The roundworm of the cat, which belongs to a different species called Toxocaramistax, behaves in roughly the same way as that of the dogs, but with cats there is no possibility of infection within the womb. Larvae, however, are emptied with the milk in masses. Regarding humans, the emphasis is on prevention. Following their release from the host, roundworm eggs go through 2-3 weeks of tough training to become infective, so if you remove the poop of your dog immediately, rather than going round and looking at it for weeks until it's covered by grass and the kid rolls over it, making it unnoticeably flat, you have reduced the risk of infection. 
Otherwise, the rules of general hygiene are valid. Vegetables, fruits and hands are to be washed. You should keep an eye on your kids who enjoy sticking light bulbs, saw blades and poop-stained playground sand in their mouths. Summing it up. Roundworms of dogs and cats are parasites found all over the world. Their eggs are viable for a long time and very enduring, so there's one round almost every corner, weaving plans of world domination. Roundworms cause symptoms mostly in young animals. Your pet can and does get infected in several different ways, so regular deworming, particularly in the case of young ones, must not be neglected in the fight against the disease. The parasite can infect humans as peritonic hosts, so battling roundworms is in our common interest. Just like world peace. Rover, the hell are you doing? Spit it out now! Come here! Oh no, go away! Now it's feathers everywhere! We're not getting any dinner tonight, oh no. Dr. Eva Falk was kind enough to fact check this video. I thank her very much, as much as I thank Seva for its support.